Hi, how's it going? Welcome back to my clan. How are you? I missed you. Have you been well? Have you been sleeping? Have you been eating? I hope you're eating. You better be eating. As soon as I'm finished filming this video, I think I'm gonna order Wendy's. So I'm also going to be eating. <laughs> anyway, how are you? Oh my God, it's been so long, I feel. I've kind of been um, a little bit depressed. And so I've been avoiding you. And I've just been watching a lot of BL dramas. Like not reading BL, just watching BL, like a lot of it. And that's been my life really. It's kind of like my escape. But I knew that I needed to film something because I felt like I wanted to talk to you, like I missed you. So I was like, okay, well, okay, I'll just like, I'll film like a manga haul because I literally don't know what else to film. I don't know why. I'm really not in the mood to film vlogs. Like, I don't know why. I think I literally just need to like do it. I just need to do it and just do it. <laughs> we have a manga hall today, here, in this room, in this space, with me and you, you and I. And I'm so excited. There's a lot of BL, as you probably know. Because listen, you might know, you might not, I don't know. I'm in my BL era, excessively in my BL era. Like, it's a bit ridiculous, it's a bit embarrassing. I don't want to lie to you, Tiffany. I want to be honest with you. And I want you to know that, like, um, I'm unwell. <laughs> Duh, like no shit. Of course I am. Like what else would I be? Let's talk about some manga that I've bought recently and manga that I got for my birthday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's do it. I think I want to start out with the ones that I haven't read and then work our way to the ones I have read. The ones I haven't read is the smaller pile and the ones I have read is the bigger pile. First of all, I have Fangs by Billy Bally Bailey, Bally Bailey. I really, really enjoy this artwork. And then the back also I have another vampire-esque BL. And that one I thought was like, okay, but I'm really excited for this one because I've heard very good things about it. I literally don't know what this is about. I'm assuming it's about two vampires and they're like, gay. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming, I don't know. Oh, for sure they're gay though. I've just opened the page to a sex scene and dude is thrusting. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is kind of like cheating. I didn't buy this recently, I bought it like months ago, but I figured I would show it to you because it is BL and it looks really, really cute. And that is Poppy Love by Suchita Hara. Look at how pretty this cover is. Look at it, it's so fucking, look at that dog. Look at that dog, are you joking? It's so pretty. I do not know what this is about, I have no idea. I did lend this to my friend and she read it and she said that one of the dudes is the dog. <laughs> One of the dudes is this dog. He turns into a human and then they like fall in love or something like that. She said that it was cute. At least I think she said it was cute. I can't remember. Classmates. Look how pretty this is. I don't know how I feel about the art style, to be honest with you, Tiffany. I don't know if I like live, laugh, love, but they're so gay. They're incredibly gay. There's more than one volume, I think. So I do want to pick up the rest of the series. I have not read this yet, but from what I know also, it's about two dudes in school who are like classmates and then they like fall in love or whatever. Like maybe, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. And then I also have our dining table. Look how pretty this is. It's so cute. I don't really like children. I don't really like reading about children. Although I do read a lot about children. Why do I do that? Anyway, but this looked really cute and it seems like it's about like a single father and then like this dude who's like, just like hanging around like his friend, but then they like fall in love. And I think they like start raising this child together. And like, <laughs> it's so cute, I could die. Both of the leads seem to be pretty hot, which like, I don't know about you, but like for me, when I read BL, I need at least one of them to be hot. Otherwise I can't get into it. I don't know what that's about, but that's how I feel about BL. Anyway, I also have this one, which my friend Kiva and Dom gave me for my, for my birthday. And that is, I didn't mean to fall in love by Minta Suzu Mara. When I opened this to the first page, it's a lot. It greets you. It greets you in a certain way. And by a certain way, I mean like, it's literally like the first, the first page, the first page, there's a dude. <laughs> there's a, there's a man sitting on a phallic object. Do you know what I mean? Are you picking up what I'm putting down, Tiffany? There's a guy sitting on a phallic object. 
That's the first, it's literally the first page. It's a lot. <laughs> I will show you this page though, which is just, look how cute. The art style is actually quite nice. The dudes do look hot. I honestly have no idea what this is about. I literally have no idea. Maybe they wanna be fuck buddies. I'm too lazy to read the synopsis. <laughs> Enough of BL for a second. Let's talk about a few things that aren't BL. One of those being My Dress Up Darling, volume 10. I think I'm up to date with volume nine. I just need to read this one. And all I want, more than anything in this entire world, Tiffany. Actually, no, there are other things I want more, but I just want to see the main characters just, just kiss. Just put their faces together and kiss. <sighs> And the fact that we're on volume 10 and it has not happened, like upsets me so much. Like spoiler alert, first of all. <laughs> but it's so upsetting. It's so upsetting because multiple times they've been like this, this close and it's never happened. And I'm so upset. Lauren is literally iconic. I love her so much. If you don't know what my dress of darling is, get out from under that rock. You don't need to be there. I also have a few horror moments, namely the summer Hikaru died. I'm so excited to read this. I think honestly, I might vlog reading this and then maybe like work my way into other horror things because I really want to read this soon because it looks very, very spooky. Just from this page alone, is this gay? <laughs> I need to chill out. I need to stop thinking of, literally, literally. Okay, and I know that, I know that this is toxic. <laughs> This is how I know I've gone full Fujoshi is like, I'll see two random dudes on the street. They'll be just walking together and I'll be like, wow, they're in love. <laughs> no man is safe from my BL mind, okay? It is constantly activated. I'm like the Terminator. I like, I scan the streets and I'm like, gay, 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 gay. Everyone is gay, <laughs> but I will literally ship strangers with each other. I'm also doing it in just like straight media, period. Just like characters who aren't queer coded at all. I'm just like, they're gay for each other, obviously, duh. Anyway, this is about this guy whose best friend is Hukaru. Why did I say that weird? Hikaru. And Hikaru has died, but Hikaru is still like prancing around. Hikaru is still walking the walk, okay? He's still talking the talk. It's just that he knows that Hikaru has been replaced by something. It looks like Hikaru and sounds like Hikaru and talks like Hikaru, but he knows that it's not Hikaru and that something else has killed his friend and taken its place. It sounds so fucking good. It sounds so spooky, so scary, so oh, ooky dooky. Like I'm so excited. Another horror manga that I have talked about recently, actually, actually I think I talked about it in my, in my TBR, um, is PTSD Radio Volume 2. I read Volume 1, as you might know, scared the ever living shit out of me. It's a very spooky series. I don't really know what it's about. Also, this guy looks like a penis. And every single time I see him, that's all I think is like, wow, looks like a penis. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. I really hope it's not, because that's kind of weird. Oh. I hate it. <laughs> I flipped to a page and I was like, oh, immediately I hate it. I hate it. I'm gonna share it with you so that you can also be cursed by this image. Honestly, the author, Masaki Nakayama, go fuck yourself. Literally go fuck yourself. It's too spooky. I, oh my God, I'm literally afraid to read this. I'm literally, I'm so, I'm so scared. I'm literally anxious. Okay, and then I also have this book, which is a manhwa, not a manga, but it looks so cute, mostly because I like really love the cover. And that is bloody sweet. Look at this. Are you joking? I bought it because there's like a hot elf vampire guy on the cover. Duh. What am I gonna do? Not buy this book because that's crazy. From what I know, it's about a vampire who bonds to this girl and he's like, we're married now. And she's like, what? I really don't know what to expect from it. I just know that I really like the art style and I really like the character design. And then I also have this book and I don't know if it's actually BL. I haven't read it yet, but I want to find out. And that is A Man and His Cat. This is volume six. No, sorry, this is volume five. Basically, from what I understand about a dude and his little cat, like this is his cat and he loves his cat so much. Like what else do you need or want in life than just like to see a cute old man and his cute little cat? Honestly, I feel like this is the kind of thing that would like make me cry immediately. Like immediately make me cry. The last book in the have not read section is hyperventilation. This is another manhwa. I honestly thought that this was like a manga 
And so when it came and it was like this teeny tiny thing, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want it anymore. Because sometimes I feel like, and this is crazy, but hear me out. I feel like the dudes are a bit too broad shouldered. Like I feel like this guy, his shoulders are too broad. And it's like, and it takes me out of the story a little bit. I don't know, I don't know if that's just me, but that's how I feel. But I think I'm still gonna read it because it still does look cute. I think it's about like a high school student. Or no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's about a high school reunion. And like, I think two old classmates rekindle their, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's talk about the manga that I've bought recently that I have read. So first of all, we have Hirano and Kagura. This is volume three. This is the spinoff to Sasaki and Miyano and I'm literally obsessed with it. I almost, like I ship these two just as much as I ship Sasaki and Miyano. Like I didn't expect to, but there's something about it, my dude. And I don't know if it's just the fact that like, they're so perfect for each other or or what, but like, they're just sweet little dumplings. I just, all I wanna see is them be happy together. And also to see them kiss because duh. <laughs> I love this series almost as much as I love Sasaki and Miyano. The, the other thing as well is like, I don't know who I think is hotter. like. Kagira or Hirano like I literally cannot decide because they both have like their cute things do you know what I mean <laughs> Kagira okay and then Hirano like tell me which one is hotter you literally there's no way to know you there's no way to know if you haven't checked out Sasaki and Miyano or uh, Hirano and Kagira you need to my dude you need to my dude my guy you need to it's so cute especially if you love gay shit a little bit off off the rails, off the tracks. It's not really gay, but it is something that I very much enjoy. And that is In the Clear Moonlit Dusk, volume five. Look at her. She's stunning. I am obsessed with this cover. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with the series. I don't really need to say much because I've talked about it so much, like almost as much as I've talked about Sasuke Miyano, maybe even more. I love these two so much i'm gonna be honest with you i read this and then immediately went online and read the scans so i'm all caught up i just need to wait now I, now it's just a waiting game for me and i kind of regret that because i wish i had just like been patient but i'm so impatient and i don't know <laughs> As an adult, I really relate to impatient people. I never really considered myself impatient, but now that I'm actually starting to like, you know, grow up and be an adult, I'm like, oh, you're literally the least patient person who's ever existed. I need to chill out. <laughs> and then I also have this, which is Magical Girl Incident. Look how pretty this cover is. Are you joking? This is about this guy who one day randomly <laughs> transforms into a magical girl, like a literal girl who fights crime. That's what he transforms into. Series is basically him trying to figure out why he's transforming into this girl. I honestly started the volume. I have not finished it yet though, but I'm going to. And I really, really enjoy the artwork and the character design. We also have to talk about killing stalking. I have volumes one, two, and three. This is a BL series. And like, literally, if you don't believe me, if you don't think this is BL, you're literally delusional. What else do you think it is besides BL? Like obviously it's horror slash thriller, but it's a BL horror thriller. Like use your head, use your little common sense brain. Hmm? Killing stalking. I have volume one, volume two, volume three. As you might know, I, I have conflicted feelings about this. Like I really enjoy it. And I also really hate how much I love and am attracted to Sangwoo because he's literally a demon. He's the most evil person I've ever seen, but he's so hot. <laughs> I really enjoy this series. I like how tense it is. It's very, very intense and also very graphic. So if, like, if you're not into some fuck shit, don't read it, my guy. Look up the trigger warnings. I've been thinking maybe I might read it online or maybe I should just be patient and just wait until the rest of the series comes out. I don't know. I kind of don't want bum to be with Sangwoo though. Like I know, I know I was like, Sangwoo's so hot, blah, blah. And I do ship him with Bum. Like I do think they're cute, but also I really, I really want Bum to be okay. 
<laughs> I bought this and I am obsessed with it. Like, I love it so much. And I know that it's not for everyone. It's not going to be for everyone, but I really, really love it because I think it's hilarious and also kind of hot. And that is Happy Crappy Life. I think the Japanese translation is supposed to be like Happy Shitty Life, but in English, it's Happy Crappy Life. Do I tell you that this is some of the funniest shit I've ever read in my life? This is a BL about two dudes. They're both straight, right? They're both straight dudes. Uh, they just happen to really love getting fucked in the ass. <laughs> they're just like really, really into anal play, like really into it, but they're straight. The blonde dude, this guy, ends up getting fired from his job because there's like this like embarrassing photo of him with the boss's daughter. I think it's a photo of her pegging him or something. I can't remember. And so he gets fired basically. And so he has to go live um, out in the boonies where he meets this guy and they realize <laughs> <laughs> that they both have the same kink, that they're both into the same thing sexually. So they become fuck buddies. <laughs> and and they like, they take turns fucking each other. It's such a stupid concept and it's so fucking funny. I love it. The only thing I hate about this series, cause I did also, I will say, go online and read the rest of it online. The series is still ongoing. The only thing I don't like about this is that it uses like rape as like a joke but like over and over again. Um, like one of the characters continually gets sexually assaulted by this dude. Um, and it's like played for laughs, but it's like not funny. And it's it's cringy. That part of it, cringe, hate it, don't like that. And if you don't like that kind of thing, I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. But the rest of the series is so funny. I love it so much. Besides that one part, obviously. Also, I love the chemistry between the two the two uh, main characters because they they just have this banter to them. Do you know? I will quickly also show you these books, which I did pick up, which is volume three and volume four of I Cannot Reach You. I did show volume one and two in my last haul. I just went and picked up the third and fourth volume. This is like a school slice of life BL. Very much enjoy this, very much like it. It's very cute would recommend. Especially if you like Sasaki and Miano, I think you would like that as well. And then I also have Deco Boko Sugar Days and Deco Boko Bitter Sweet Days. This is the first one. This is a sequel. These are so cute. These are so fucking cute. So the basic premise is basically that this dude is best friends with this dude and they're like in love with each other. And like this guy is like a short king. He's like five five or something. And his friend is like six feet tall, but he is like the top, he's the bottom. It's like a whole thing. The sequel is really cute as well. I was kind of bummed out by the sequel to be honest though also. I was like, this is getting serious. This is, this is going places. This one had a bit more of a like serious tone to it. This gave me such Sasaki and Miyano vibes. And I literally don't even like remember how it ends. Oh wait, no, I do. I do. And that is Tomorrow Make Me Yours. Look at, li listen, listen. Sasaki, Miano. You cannot tell me anything different. The fact that they literally look exactly like Sasaki and Miano, I was like suspicious. I don't remember this that much. I think I'd have to reread it. I read it maybe like three weeks ago and I do not remember a lot about it, which doesn't say great things about it. So maybe I wouldn't recommend it, but from what I do remember, it was sweet. It was cute. It's just maybe forgettable. This one was not forgettable. I think about this. <laughs> I think about this manga, <laughs> but for no reason. And that is Yagi <laughs> the Bookshop Goat. Literally embarrassing. I really, really liked this. This was so cute. It's about like a little goat that works in a bookstore and his boss is a wolf and they fall in love. <laughs> So cute. It was so sweet. It was so cute. I love the character design. The, um, and like I said before, it's like one of those things where you turn a page and all of a sudden there's like, there's one dude jerking off another dude. Like It's one of those kinds of manga where it just kind of like hits you in the face with like the sexual content, but I really enjoyed it. Also look at, fu <laughs> look at them. Can you get any sweeter? You literally can't. I hope that this uh, mangaka does more with these characters because I really, really like them and I want to see them again. And then I also have, there are things I cannot tell you, which I think, wait, did I haul this last time? I can't remember. Either way, look at them. 
first of all, I love this cover because I think it's kind of hot. When I talk about this book, I always talk about how hot I think the cover is. But anyway, I love these characters. Their design, stunning, gorgeous. And like both of them, so hot. So this is basically about best friends who've been friends, I think, since like high school. They're both like in love with each other, but neither of them wants to say anything for different reasons. And it's so good. It's very sweet, but also kind of serious. It has messages and themes of like coming out and shame and like family. It's really interesting. I really enjoyed this. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Something that I don't think is necessarily worth it is Platinum Blood. This, I don't know why I bought this. <laughs> you get the picture. You know what this is about. You see this and you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> This is very much porn, but with like a little bit of plot. And I think overall kind of forgettable. It's basically about this priest who has taken care of this vampire. There's explicit sex, religious kink, age gap, dubious consent, adoptive incest, and blood and violence. The adoptive incest thing, the age gap thing is a bit weird because they're like, they're like, yeah, vampires age very quickly. And so you're like, okay, so he was a child and then he was an adult. How how many years has passed? How old is this? How old is this person? And it's never like explicitly said, so it's kind of weird. I don't think I would recommend this. And then the last thing I want to talk to you, Tiffany, about is Seaside Stranger Volume One and Volume Two. I did read Volume One. I've also watched the movie, and I really really enjoyed the movie. I haven't picked up the second book yet though. I'm obsessed with them. They're so freaking cute it's like this whole thing of like will they won't they and it's so cute the movie also was so cute and very surprising <laughs> anyway my friends my family my family thank you so much for watching this video for being here with me i really appreciate it i hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below what you thought what manga you would recommend i'd love to know especially if it's like bl or if it's horror manga i would love that Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, talk about creepy shit. We talk about Hakaru and PTSD radios and shit. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Au revoir. Goodbye, Tiffany. <gasps> Bye. <laughs> Keep thinking that I could've done something But now I'm left with an empty heart No making amends No waking up beside you And holding you till we forget it all How could I know